So Brady, you challenged me the other day to come up with an object to talk about for Deep Sky videos. And I was actually kind of struggling without the Messier catalog to, to draw from. And then it came to me, there's a really nice object. I don't think it counts as a Deep Sky object because you can see it with your naked eye. Um, but I thought it was worth talking about. So this is the double star called Alberio that is located in the constellation Cygnus. So Cygnus is the swan. It's one of the only constellations that actually looks like the thing it's supposed to represent. You can actually see sort of the long neck and at the end of the neck is a bright star called Beta Cygni, also known as Alberio. And this will be known to anyone who does a little bit of amateur stargazing because it's a really accessible target. If you look at it with a small telescope, what appears to be a single star to the naked eye resolves itself into a really nice double. But what really sets it apart are the striking color differences between the two stars. And you can see this when you look through the telescope. So you've seen this book before. Constellations as seen in Southern India. Yeah. So this was a book written by my great grandfather, also an astronomer. And he wrote about this. His name is Robert John Pocock. It was. <laughs> and he says, Alberio is a beautiful double star. Uh, the colors of the two stars are golden yellow and sapphire blue, and the pair forms perhaps the loveliest contrast of colors to be found in the heavens. So I thought we were going to do a little video about the colors of stars. We we're going to talk about how the color actually tells us a bit about the temperature and that bluer stars tend to be hotter and red stars tend to be cooler, relatively speaking. Um, but the more I read about Alberio, the more uh, intrigued and confused I became because what looks like a double star actually, as we look more closely, reveals itself to be a far more complicated system. So Pocock didn't know this. Pocock didn't know this. Nobody really knew this until uh, quite recently because we didn't have the uh, capability to make those kinds of measurements. So if we start, I'm going to get my props out so I can keep things, keep track of things. Right. We have our two stars. So we're going to call them Alberio capital A and Alberio capital B. These are the ones Pocock did know. Yeah, these are the ones Pocock did know. So A is the, um, the yellow one, it's slightly brighter. B is the uh, bluer, slightly dimmer one. Astronomers have been observing these objects for over a hundred years. In fact, when I went to look at the literature and pulled up all of the papers on this object to learn more about it, the oldest one was from 1897. And because astronomers have, have digitized and archived all the published papers, we can, we can show you that paper. And so there's a, a, a mystery around these two to begin with, which is they appear to be next to each other on the sky, but are they actually a physical double? Do they actually orbit around one another? And keen viewers of this channel, this will sound familiar to you because of course, when uh, we did M40, that was one of the questions in the Messier catalog. That there was one object that was a double star, and the big question mark was, uh, is, this, is this a double? Well, how could they not be? One could be in the foreground. Yeah, one could be in the foreground, one could be a long way away. And until you get um, some sort of measurement on their actual distances, uh, you, you can't tell them apart. M40 led to a very illustrious publication by Merrifield, Gray, and Heron, um, actually revealing from the Gaia telescope, once, once sufficiently good data was released, that that in fact was not a double. Those stars were physically separate. So are these two bonded? That's the question. Well, still unclear. So even with the great data from all of these telescopes, from the Gaia mission, which releases more and more data in, in separate releases, it's still a little unsure. Part of the reason is that they're actually re really bright and that can cause just as much problem for making good measurements as something being too faint. The, the suggestion was unlikely if they were a pair, they'd be on a very, very long orbit. But we hadn't actually pinned the error bars down, those all important error bars to be sure. But there's another problem. Measuring the motion of this star, Alberio A, becomes difficult because there are signs that it itself is a binary pair. 
So if you think about measuring the, the, the relative motions of different stars, we call this the proper motion of stars, this is complicated by the fact that we're moving through the galaxy, they're moving through the galaxy, we're moving around the sun, and if they are in a binary pair, they're wobbling as well. So things get, get quite complicated quite quickly. But there's indications that Albireo A is in fact a double. So I'm gonna take this one away and I'm gonna replace it with Albireo A A and Albireo A C. <laughs> okay. So these are too close together to be distinguished on the sky as separate objects, but we can use lots of different techniques to, to learn about them. And so in a paper from 2021, uh, I really like this title. Um, it's called A Celestial Matryoshka, you know, those nesting Russian dolls. Basically, the authors threw everything that they could at this system to try to learn about it. And they discovered that this pair was made up of a red giant and a blue main sequence star, so a star that's just normally fusing hydrogen. And they had masses of 5.2 times the mass of our sun, and 2.7 times the mass of the sun, and they orbit each other with a period of around 120 years. Okay, so we've learned something about this, but, there's always a but, it's still not satisfactory. Because if you do a separate analysis of the orbit of this pair itself, the mass has come out the wrong way. So there's an indication that there's, there's too much mass in this system, and, and there's, there's something else there. And this is where this idea of nesting dolls come in. And so it is quite possible that Albireo AC is too massive, that there's some hidden mass there. And so the question mark is what might that be? And so perhaps it itself has a companion. And whenever we talk about hidden mass, we always raise the idea that it might be a little black hole. Um, that has not yet been confirmed. That's just a hypothesis. But it's interesting because I, th I think, if I'm correct, if it were confirmed that that had a black hole orbiting around it, that would be the closest black hole to Earth because it is only a, hundred, a few hundred light years away. But the story doesn't end there <laughs> because uh, another paper came out with another great title, which was yet another star in the Albireo system. And so this paper, again, looked carefully at radial motions, and this time suggested that there is an additional member of this system, possibly in orbit around Albireo AA, which we are gonna call Albireo AD. And this is likely to be a very low mass star. Indications come from the radial velocity measurements, much smaller than the sun, orbiting around this with a period of about 371 days, so not too dissimilar from the Earth's orbit around the Sun. So what was a beautiful double system now looks like quite a, a crowded system. There's a little bit more information coming wi more widely. One of these papers uh, suggested that there are four additional sort of associated stars nearby that might not be physically bound in an orbit, but might have some physical association. And also the analysis of the originals, AA and, and AB, suggests that they were probably formed in the same place and at the same time. They're what we call coeval. So while they might not be an orbital pair, they probably came from the same gas cloud when they formed. And in fact, what we might be seeing is the, the, the remnant core of a dissolving open cluster. So an association of stars that all formed about the same time, um, but were not gravitationally sufficiently bound to retain uh, a physical association and are just sort of drifting apart. Just so I'm clear, B, our, our, our dark blue one there, mm -hmm. one of the original two, the OG two, yeah. that's the, the current thinking is that's not gravitationally bound to the others. It's, it's, far, it's far away now, like it's either in the foreground or the background. Yes, that's the indication. They're not too, too far away, but they're probably too far away to be physically bound. So let's move this over here. Right. We're not entirely sure the connection, but it's unlikely to be part of this conglomeration that we see over here. But visually, 
what we're mainly seeing is AA, the, the red one there, yeah. and and that one. That's and the, right. And the, the yellow, the aqua one, and the black hole, we don't really see without some hardcore analysis. Yeah. So hidden behind the view of, of what looks like this in our telescope, yeah. uh, and when we see our beautiful different colored pairs, what is actually in reality behind it is something possibly that looks like this. Thanks for watching. We'll put links in all the usual places, including a link to our playlist of videos all about the Messier objects and a playlist of videos I've made filming at telescopes all around the world, like the ones you see on the screen at the moment. And speaking of things you see on the screen at the moment, see these names? These are some of our Patreon supporters. Please, please, if you can spare a dollar or two, consider supporting us on Patreon. It helps us make more videos and we'll share extra little stuff with you on bonus goodies. And, you know, maybe put your name here too. See your name floating through Cygnus. That's something you don't see every day. <laughs>